Hi everyone and welcome to my art journal series where every Tuesday I will be posting a Christmas project all the way until Christmas. And in this series I always like to show you where I get inspiration. So this time it was this flower, the big poinsettia one. I'm going for a wreath and for that I will also use some stems from this C6 tie that I have used in the first project that I did. So if you already have that uh, big die with the festive stems you will see another way on how you can use it. For my project today I am going to work on a loose paper. This is thick watercolor paper and of course you can use any other type of mixed media paper as long as you know that it is quite sturdy and it's going to take uh, your mediums nicely without warping. So this is 8 by 8 in size. For keeping together my loose original pages I like to use the um, disc bound system where you get those uh, rings and uh, you can place any page wherever you like. So here is an example of one of my 8x8 disc bound journals and I did share probably all of these pages here and here is a Christmas one that I shared last year. So you can work on any size that you like and then disc bound and create your DIY art journal but for today I decided to place it inside the shadow box. This way I can decorate my room and if I want and the season is over I can always punch holes on one side and put it back in my 8x8 disc bound journal. You will see me today working on this craft mat. I have a few of them so that I can switch them. This way I will avoid cleaning my area all the time as I'm filming. Now I will be working on this mixed media paper. This is not the watercolor paper that I am going to use for my base. And you can see that it is kind of off-white. I'm going to show you a really fun technique that you can use to create wooden backgrounds and you need to work on a paper that is going to take lots of mediums nicely. So that's why I chose to work on this Ranger mixed media paper. I'm going to start by covering up the whole area with those two acrylic paints. These are Distress Paints, Ground Espresso and Vintage Photo. If you don't have the exact same colors, you can use any two shades of brown. Just make sure you use acrylic paint, it has to dry permanently and I'm going to explain later on why. So I'm going to use a quite white brush and this is a stiff brush so I like to go with a stiff brush for this technique because I like to see the strokes. Now I'm going to choose a direction and I'm only going to do every stroke on this direction up and down. I'm not going to go for the perfect blend, actually you don't want to blend those two colors together. I'm going to mix them up on my page. By the way, I'm working directly on the paper. I haven't primed it with gesso or anything like that. I just apply the paint directly on top. This is a great technique for creating good and backgrounds and it's not only for our journaling or mixed media projects. You can create this type of uh, pattern papers, cut them in uh, thin strips, create wooden planks, put them back together and you will end up having a lovely background for your card making as well. So now I am done with the first step, I'm going to use my heat card and make sure that this first layer of paint is completely dry. Now I'm going to bring in a stamp to add some texture on top of that. For that I'm going to go with this one, that I, this is a set by Tim Holtz that I had for ages, but I'm sure you probably have something similar in your stash. Now for that I'm going with archival link and this is really important to use archival link. It has to dry permanent. You can go with a dark shade of brown or even black and you will see that I'm going to use both of them for different textures. So I'm starting with brown and I'm going to cover up the whole area and it doesn't matter if I end up having a seam. It's not going to show at the end. So here it is, I did cover up everything with brown and I did stamp in different areas with a little bit of black. And you see it is more prominent there. And now you have a wooden texture. You can cut it out into planks. You can use it as it is for your background. You can cut out your branches or cut out tree trunks out of it. I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to show you how you can get that peeled paint effect. So for the next step, I'm going to use the Distress Micro Glaze. If you don't have this one, you can use Vaseline. It works just the same. I'll pick up the product with my finger. You can use a stiff brush if you like. I just like to feel the product and how much I have. And I'm going to apply it in different areas of my paper, making sure that I don't cover up everything. And I'm also following the direction of the wood grain, not the other way. This is really important for the finished look. Now, the more of the product that you apply, the more of wood you will be able to see at the end. 
What we are going for is a resist paint technique. So when you apply Distress Microglaze or Vaseline in any other case, then this is where the paint is not going to stick and you will be able to wipe it out. If you lift the paper to catch the light, you will see where you have placed the product. And now for the next step, I'm going to bring in my acrylic paint. And in my case, I want to have the paint on top of the wood to be off-white. So I'm using anti-cleaner, which I'm going to mix up with picket fence, which is white. Just decide what color you want the paint on top of the wood to be and go for it. I'm going to cover up completely the whole area. And this time I'm going to use a soft brush, quite white, so that I can cover up a bigger area quickly. I'm going to dip the brush directly on top of the paint and go over it, again following the direction of the wood. I'm picking a good amount of paint and as I apply it I make sure that I don't drag the microglaze product that is underneath. Just go softly over the paper. Now if you notice you will see that uh, some separation is already happening on my paper where that microglaze is underneath. Now I'm going to let it dry completely and it is going to take a while since I was generous with the paint on top. If you like and you are impatient like me, you can speed up the drying process with your heat gun and you can see all the separation happening at the moment. Now you can use a clean paper towel or a baby wipe and just start wiping off the paint that hasn't stuck on the paper. And that's where you have the microglaze underneath. Now I did apply lots of microglaze on my paper and that's why I have lots and lots of uh, wood showing through. But it really depends on the look that you are going for. Now you can leave it as it is. You can repeat the same process on top of it, even with another color of paint. I'm just brushing some white here and there and I'm going to call this one done. I'm using my paper trimmer and uh, I cut thin strips of paper, so I will create wooden planks. These are about one and a half inches and I think that the effect that you get is absolutely stunning. I will darken up the edges just a touch so that I get rid of that uh, white edge and when you place the wooden planks next to each other, you will get kind of a shadow in between. And now finally it's time to create my background. Now I'm working on my 8x8 watercolor paper and I'm going to stick the wooden planks down. I will stick everything down completely randomly. I'm not following the pattern that I had in the beginning just because I like the look. If you don't, you can make sure that you put them back together. I like how you can see the shadow in between those planks. I think it adds a lot to the finished look. For gluing everything down, I'm using my glue stick and this is a, a new to me product by Dilusions. I just wanted to give it a try because I just got it in the mail, but of course you can use your favorite adhesive. Finally, I did use my paper trimmer to cut out everything that was sticking out. And here is my background that I am absolutely in love with. I think it would look great with green paint on top or even with light blue. And now it's time to work on the focal point. For that I'm going to do a little bit of die cutting. This is the festivities die and I'm going to place on top my paper. Again I'm working with mixed media paper. And the fun part about working with um, these big dies is that you can run it through your die cutting machine with more than one layer of cardstock. So here I'm using two layers and I will end up having a couple of flowers that I can uh, stack one on top of the other later on to have a fuller uh, focal point. For the leaves of my wreath I'm going to switch to the festive stems die. Again this is a big die and I'm actually running it through with four different layers of cardstock and it really cuts like butter. And I did that a couple of times so I will end up having lots and lots of branches since I don't know from the beginning how many of those I'm going to use. Of course you can die cut everything using colored cardstock so that you don't have to color anything. However, I'm going to go with sprays today just because I end up having a really quick result. Plus I get instant texture, visual texture on my die cuts since I end up having some lighter and darker areas that look like shadows and highlights. On top I'm going to go with Distress Spray Stain. This is a new color by Tim Holtz. It is the new Rustic Wilderness which is the perfect color for what I was going for. 
I want to have a vibrant result, that's why I'm going heavily with spray over all those leaves and I'm also going to apply some water so that I can easily move the color up and down and this way you create darker and lighter areas. I'm going to move the light so you can see the colors better and I think this is the perfect color for these leaves. The color is going to stay nice and vibrant just because I used spray stain. If I used the Distress Oxide spray then it would end up uh, more dull and uh, it will have that uh, chalky finish but this is not the look that I was going for my project today. For my other type of leaves I'm going to repeat the same process again with Rustic Wilderness but this time I'm going to blend in some brown as well, again Distress Stain just to get a different look and feel. So when I create the wreath you will have different colors and textures. Again I apply water on top, I just spray a good amount, help those colors blend together and move. And finally I'm going to go with red for the flowers as well as the little dots that I'm going to use for my berries. And I'm going to show you a fun trick for the berries. They are going to end up quite flat, but if you want to end up having a highlight on one side, then just use a wet brush and wipe off a little bit of color. Remember, Distress Ink reacts with water, so you can easily lift some color. Again, I did die cut everything out of uh, the mixed media paper, but this technique would work nicely on watercolor paper as well. Another little detail that I did on the leaves is to add snow. You can cover them up with Versa marking and then sprinkle on top some white embossing powder and then heat set it. Instead of using a white embossing powder, which is finer, I'm going to use this chunky embossing powder. This is great for creating waves on your sea or for adding it as snow. It's going to stay nice and uh, thick when it dries. However, since it doesn't stick easily, you have to heat your project underneath. This way the air from the heat gun is not going to blow away any little particles before sticking them down. And here I have everything, all the pieces that I need for putting together my project. Notice how vibrant the snow looks in comparison to the splatters, the white splatters that I did on the other type of the leaf. So I get a different uh, look. And now it's time to create my wreath. For that I'm going to use a round object and I do have these dies here. I'm going to use a pencil and just draw all around so that I have a line to follow. Just use a plate or whatever round you have and depending of course on the size of the project that you are working on. I'm using my Novo Deluxe glue only at the base of my leaves so that I can stick them down and at the same time I can lift and add the next one underneath. This way I do have a lot of dimension and I can fluff them up later on. Of course the dimension that you are going for depends on where you are working. If this is a canvas then you can go as dimensional as you like or if this is a decorative piece like I'm going to frame it on a shadow box. However if you are working inside the book or if you are planning to add it on your disc bound journal then you can add a little bit of dimension but you cannot go overboard. The more leaves you use the fuller your wreath is going to look of course. And uh, for the second uh, type of leaves I am going with uh, tiny little foam squares on the leaves just so that I can lift them a little bit. These are going to add dimension on my project but not too much and it would be okay if I am going to later on add it on my disc bound journal. Now I'm going to put on some music and let you see how I put together the whole wreath and I'll catch you back later on.
Now I will create my own glitter paste so I'm going to use a little bit of uh, matte medium and on top I'm going to add chunky glitter. I'm going to mix it up nicely and then I'm going to apply that with my spatula at the center of my flower. It looks quite milky at the moment but the matte medium is going to dry completely clear so the only thing you will be able to see at the end will be the chunky glitter. Plus it's going to stay nice and put at the center of my flower and you will not end up having glitter all over the place. And of course you can call this project done, however I'm going to finish it off by adding uh, a cheap quote that says Merry Christmas. Another way to go would be to die cut a word and stick it at the center of the wreath, for example joy or peace. And since I'm not planning to add this uh, layout on my disc bound journal just yet, but uh, I will use it to decorate my craft room for the season, I'm going to fluff it up a little bit, add lots of dimension, and then I'm going to place it inside my shadow box. You can remove the glass if you like, I like to keep it on because it protects my project from the dust. By the way, this is just a shadow box that I got from IKEA. I'm absolutely happy with how this project turned out and it's going to give a lovely festive feeling on my craft room. Here are some close-up photos where you can see better all the details. Just like always, you will find linked down below everything I used. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment because this is the way to tell me that you like my videos and you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.